Welcome to HNHN Daily. I'm Susanna Hopsalern, Senior Editor for Hospitals and Health Networks Magazine. Health information technology is the platform for the transformation of healthcare and delivering greater value to patients. Today, I'm joined by Russ Branzell, CEO and President of CHIME, to discuss the 2015 Health IT Priorities for Rural Hospital CEOs. CHIME is the professional organization for chief information officers and other senior healthcare IT leaders. Welcome, Russ. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. We're at this Healthcare Rural Leadership Conference, and trustees and CEOs are talking about, how can I get the most value of that current investment I've already sunk into IT? Well, I think the fallacy so far has been, and it's been about the technology. And the reality is it's about the outcomes from that technology. And what we're seeing now is organizations, as they mature through this process, truly mapping these investments to the outcomes to improve their organization, whether those are clinical or financial process changes. So every one of these projects, if we want to call it that, are really initiatives need to be mapped back to true outcomes. And then you pair up the technology with great process improvement, and then the outcomes start uh, being achieved throughout their organizations. Cybersecurity is a big concern for every organization. What can the board and the CEO do to support the efforts of the organization to safeguard information? This is actually an area that boards and CEOs need to take very seriously in today's world. We see the breaches occurring almost every single day. Uh, in most part, they need to make sure that they're doing the appropriate risk management. And that is a responsibility of boards in general, is to manage the risk of the organizations. What we're seeing is the CIOs are trying to make the appropriate investments where they can, but for small and rural, even smaller, medium-sized organizations, the amount of investment needed for security is really overwhelming, almost to the point that if they invested to the same amount as large and complex organizations, it probably would bankrupt those. So what they really need to be doing is figuring out where they can partner, what things they need to do themselves, and then also figure out how they can partner up with their associations and others providing the services, such as AHA and CHIME, to reduce that burden for themselves. Population health initiatives are based on analytics, on having access to expertise in clinical informatics. And how can a rural healthcare facility participate in these initiatives without breaking the bank? Well, I think the thought was up until recently is that everyone had to do this themselves, regardless of the size. Even a very small rural critical access had to figure out how to do this themselves. And what we're starting to see again is people come together in different ways, whether that be through their state hospital associations or just a cooperative type service with peer organizations, which in the past actually might have been competitive. And they're looking for ways to partner up on investments and solutions but also how to take that base investment they've done because of the meaningful use journey and actually leverage that through whether those be cloud-based solutions or again, maybe a partnership with others in a much larger size that can provide those services and those outcomes for them. Health IT requires a sustained investment. What can r- rural hospitals do to prepare for the IT requirements of the new healthcare delivery systems? Yeah, I think this is just like security. It's going to be an extremely uh, significant concern for boards and CEOs in particular, as well as whoever's leading IT for those organizations. The cost of what's coming is is probably going to be significantly more than even what we've just experienced for this meaningful use cycle, and that the investments are going to be very large. They're going to be very complex. And the question is, do they need to be doing this all themselves? Um, many organizations are looking ways to reduce their technology footprint, not increase it by going to service-based solutions, cloud computing, and those may sound like techie type things, but they really are what we're all doing in all of our lives. So if we follow this kind of consumer trend, which is less things being loaded on our servers or on our personal laptops, and looking for solutions where we're just getting the services we need, these can be an affordable approach for those organizations, and as well as kind of that cooperative mindset again. How can I do things collaboratively with my friends, my peers, my regional hospitals, even state hospitals, to reduce the burden of cost, but while get, still get all the benefits? To improve patient outcomes and the health status of communities, providers need to connect the patient 
and the, to the patient and to the family, and also to involve them as part of the care team. What advances in health IT are coming along that are going to really uh, improve that patient experience? The interesting part is this is probably one of the rare areas where rural and smaller communities actually have a great advantage because everyone in today's environment, and I'm sure there's a few exceptions, but almost everyone today have smartphones. They carry mobile devices. And in these smaller environments where there's a single point of care, you're not in a big competitive environment with lots of different fragmented portions of care. The small and rural environments actually have an advantage that they know their whole community. They can bring them together and engage them and then through some very simple technologies, the ways they're communicating their whole lives, which through social media, through mobile devices, they can actually connect those, those in groups of people in ways they never have before. And that's one of the things I actually admire about the small and, and rural communities that I've got to work with in the past is they all know each other. They all know when somebody's going through a tough time or going through good times, and they can bring them all together now through this concept of a care continuum and bring them together to improve the health of the whole community. And it's actually more challenging for the large urban environments and academics where there's so much fragmented care. So this is an area where I think we actually have an advantage. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm Susanna Hopsalen for h, &H Daily. <laughs>